What is up, everybody? Mark on the mic here. My good friend, Ryan Muckenhern, across from me. Now, Ryan, we've got a rifle here. We've got a flashlight. We've got some, some hand tools, a whiteboard. I had you come all the way upstairs, and it's, uh, it's about time I level with you. It's about time I level this rifle scope with you using the reverse projection method. How'd that one treat you? <laughs> Mark, you're really good at that. How'd that one treat you? That's a, that's a classic old man saying, how'd that one treat you? <laughs> uh, again, I can only assume all of this is off the cuff. None of this is premeditated. It just comes to you and flows out of your mouth. There was a little bit of prefab on the way to walking over here. I'll, it was so. Mark, uh, that was um, that was really good. Irregardless, you can't say that. <laughs> I said that to bother you. It bothers me. It bothered me saying it actually. Uh, regardless, we do have all these things here. We have you here, and this is a really cool way to make sure that your rifle scope is level, which is a critical component in the rifle scope mounting process. Got to be level. That is, a, I agree with that. Yes. Um, I mean, it can create all sorts of issues if it's not. Yeah. So the further out you shoot, the further out you're going to be off. Um, and yeah, so a level system is an important thing. And I mean, there are guys that eyeball it. Yep. And and do pretty darn good. Uh, there are guys uh, who will intentionally kind of offset their level because of That's the way they mount the rifle. Some voodoo magic right there. Uh, I'm not that way. I'd rather just make sure it's level and then, uh, then I know and then I go from there. Um, couple ways to do this, but this is a neat one. We're using light and gravity. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Let's uh, walk us through this. So what we're doing here is we're going to pass light through the objective lens of the rifle scope itself. The reticle located in the rearmost half of the optic is going to then project through our eyepiece onto this whiteboard. The whiteboard was critical. I fretted. I looked well, I didn't look, but I, I thought, oh, my gosh, we've got to procure a sheet. Mark just simply grabbed a giant whiteboard. It was which, on wheels. Yeah. How convenient. <laughs> uh, which we then affixed a plumb bob. And if you're not familiar with what a plumb bob is, it is nothing more than a string with a weight used to level stuff. Uh, this is an old tool. It's been around since we were building things as a species. Uh, so when we became upright and we started using language, uh, we were using plumb bobs. Um, this is nothing more than a string with a rock tied to it. You're not joking. There's an actual rock on it, the bottom Yeah, small of it. stone. Yeah. Yep. yep, small stone. It's JB welded, I believe, with a fishing swivel uh, on the bottom. I was uh, examining the swivel on the way up here. I think it yeah. might actually be a fairly high-quality swivel. It looks nice. We probably could have done... <laughs> yeah. We could, have, we could have done it with a lesser swivel, I think. Um, well, we just raided your tackle box when you went around. <laughs> so... Mark only fishes with the highest end and gear. And that, that's going to be a sample then. Big bobber guy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the the bob is used to indicate our square, like, vertical stadia. So this is actually going to be our point of reference that we're using to visually align our reticle with this. few things you need to execute this. Uh, Mark had mentioned a flashlight. Now, I showed up with this. Our MC Ryan said no and gave me a lightsaber. You, which, call, you call that a light? Yeah, <laughs> nice a lot. Um, this is quite a flashlight. I believe it's 3,000 3, lumens. Yeah, you could kill birds with it. Um, <laughs> it happens to fit the 56 millimeter objective of this Strike Eagle just famously and has warning symbols all over it, not to point it at your skull or um, you can light your cigarettes on it too, I think. You need a torque wrench, of course, um, and then I have a T25 driver handle here to help us speed along so we're not wasting too much time trying to get those fasteners tight. We need a sturdy rest. We've got a CTK Precision P3 Ultimate Gun Vice here. We've got a Seekins Havoc, and we have a uh, CTK Precision Strap level on there as well. You're pretty fond of that level. That level is an amazing tool. I have several of them. Yes. Uh, one thing you've mentioned to me in the past, Ryan, is uh, making sure that the eyepiece is extended out. Yes. So if you keep your diopter in your standard position and you, you project through the optic. I should have said diopter. Eyepiece works. 
it's not incorrect. Um, if if you keep your diopter inward uh, and project your reticle, you'll often find that your reticle is very blurry. So you have to overextend your diopter mechanism uh, in order to make sure that we have an acute and sharp projection onto the board itself. We don't want to be on the highest magnification. In fact, I'm going to turn this thing down to probably about 10 um, to make sure that we've got ample light coming through. We, we might go up a little bit just to make sure that we get good visibility on the reticle itself. But yeah, so diopter is going to come out a little ways, um, you know, and then dial your magnification back. On a first focal plane rifle scope, you're going to see that reticle scale with it. On the second focal plane, it looks pretty constant. Um, and then the only other thing that you got to be cognizant of here is that we're not using a regular spirit level on the top of the turret, as we've illustrated before, which is a fine technique. Um, we're actually just using one level, so we're omitting one level from the regular procedure, and we're indicating the rifle as level, as opposed to rifle and optic. We're going to use the, the light to make sure that the optic itself gets good and level. So, I would say our Seekins is on the bubble. Excellent. So sure. that means that the rifle itself is level. Yeah. We know the rifle is level. We're not certain about the rifle scope right now, or the reticle in the scope, I should say. I can tell you because I just turned it sideways, it's not level. It is askew. We've yeah. input some offset in there. Yes. Rings are secured to the base. Shall we do it? Yeah. All right. What can I help with here? Um, you're going to hold the flashlight. Excellent. That was my job when my dad and I worked on cars. Don't point that at my face. Yeah. Here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hold on. Where's the on button on this thing? It's on the other side, Mark. There we Holy go. buckets. Okay, scoot that thing right into that objective. All right. We have the reticle projected onto the board, Mark. Our reticle is not level, as indicated. Right? Shoot. So got our, our vertical indication there with the plumb bob. Our reticle is in an X passion, uh, fashion. A couple things to note here. You notice your reticle is upside down? Yes, it appears <sighs> we've that? flipped it and reversed it. You will not need to worry about that. That is normal. I'm going to rotate this reticle level. I'm going to have to move the bench just a touch, a skosh, to make sure that I am well aligned with that. Uh, what are you doing there, buddy? Oh, Shadow Puppets, Mark. You always know what will make the people laugh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just... Sure that was it. I'm just visually aligning that reticle, and then I'm going to use my other flashlight while Mark holds that moonbeam to make sure that our rifle is still well indicated. I'm going to give it a little, little bump, not much. That looks good. And, boy, I'd say that's pretty square, Mark. It looks good to me. I've got our torque wrench set. At uh, 18 inch pounds, and I'm going to just slowly, incrementally apply torque to these fasteners. This is now basically reverting to the normal mounting procedure, so as not to induce any cant into the system here. So I'm just bringing them to their shoulder, and uh, just a, a single uga of tension. No dugas yet. Well, and one thing I think is nice is you can watch to see if you've, in, you know, through this process, if you've induced a little bit of... Yeah, a little uh, weeble in the wobble there. Yeah. Yep. And so I've brought these down. I'm going to start going through them, and I'm going to start applying torque. Again, incrementally, moving between different banks of the ring screws. I just watched a piece of dust fly into that uh, laser beam that you're projecting through <laughs> that rifle scope there, and I'm pretty sure that it um, was teleported through a stargate to another galaxy. Yeah, I think uh, I'm pretty sure you could make a black hole with this thing. You could turn a black hole off with that thing. Wouldn't that be cool? That's all you had to do? You saw a black hole. It was like edging into your solar system and swallowing your planetary bodies. You just shine that flashlight on it just turned it off. Is that happening? Uh, not into ours that I'm aware of. I don't think they'd tell us, though. But what would you do? You know, nothing. You couldn't do anything. You go skydiving. <laughs> Um, here, I'm hitting cam over on this. We're getting good and snug. And final. There just, we are. 
check this rifle, make sure it didn't put any bias. And that's good there. And we're on the level. We are on the level. It's that simple. It, re- yeah. it really is that simple. It's and cool. It's a very quick way to do it, and it is actually super accurate. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're using some pretty basic stuff here at the end of the day. Yep. And doing, you know, I mean, this isn't the most complex thing in the world, but it definitely is important. Oof. Boy, that yeah. thing's bright, Mark. Yeah, this is, uh, you got to fire the, or, or uh, follow the rules of firearm safety with this thing. Do not point it at anything you do not intend to destroy. Probably make a burn mark in the I know, table. Yeah, we, we got a little wood burner. Um, cool. I'd like to say there's more to it, but there's not. Like you said, you need these handy-dandy tools, some light, some gravity, plumb bob. There's a couple of kits out there that have little clamps that go on the barrel that point to flashlight. Oh, no kidding, huh? Yeah, you can you can do it by yourself. It's more fun with a friend, but that device will help. Free well, up a hand. And I'll point out, you don't need something like this flashlight that I'm holding right here. We needed it because we were trying to um, video it, Yeah. and we just needed a little extra gas here. But the light that you had that you carry in your pocket every single day, totally sufficient. Mounted a lot of scopes with the help of this little stream light. Darn right. Um, yeah, and substitute your white wall with, uh, you we, know, we the whiteboard have, or... Yeah, we have a cream-colored wall downstairs. Works just great. Absolutely fine. Anything else, Ryan? Nope, that's about it. This is a really clever way to do this. Um, removes the bias that, uh, you know, an inexpensive spirit level could have into it. Um, and then also removes the bias that, like, a taller turret, like, the farther you get from the center of your optic with a, a vertical surface, um, the more that any run out of that vertical surface relative to the center of your, your optic will, will show up. So this is a great way to, to get her about as square as you possibly can. Well, I'll tell you what, Ryan, we cannot underestimate the gravity of having a leveled rifle scope in your system. And I appreciate for, I appreciate you for illuminating us on this topic. That one was off cuff, wasn't it? It was. I thought you were going to go with shedding some light on it. Oh yeah, sure. Illuminating mm-hmm. worked really good, but uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of gravity there, Mark. <laughs> big big physics. Well, awesome, Ryan. Well, thank you. Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, hopefully you learned something here. You can take uh, take to your little uh, toolkit of knowledge of, uh, of mounting and leveling your rifle scopes. And man, until next time, happy hunting and shooting. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Bye.